Mr. Schatter. Well, what do you see as the uh, the possibilities for reducing carbon emissions from the agricultural sector? Well, for the moment, agriculture is a very serious problem for climate change. It has been developing a dependency on fossil fuels that is extremely worrying. And this is not only a problem for the sustainability of uh, food production in price terms. It will be more and more expensive to produce food because the price of food will be more and more dependent on the volatile prices of fossil energies. But it also is a problem for climate change. And agriculture, as we all know, is one of the main drivers of climate change as a result of this use of, of fossil fuels in agricultural production. We can change this. And I recently presented a report to the Human Rights Council that describes a wide variety of techniques that could be developed under the name of agroecology that essentially seek to mimic nature on the field rather than mimicking the industrial processes. Agroecology is very um, simply described. It is using a combination of plants, trees, and animals in order to uh, move towards much more low external input types of agriculture that um, essentially use the waste produced by agriculture in order to fertilize the soils and to diminish the dependency of agriculture on fossil fuels. A very interesting concept, uh, agroecology. Can you give a concrete example of how an agroecological farm would look like? There are a few uh, techniques that fulfill these criteria that, that allow these techniques to be described as agroecological. Uh, one example is agroforestry, which is the most well-known and perhaps the most widespread. By planting trees alongside plant crops, you manage to fertilize the soils because the leaves of the trees capture the nitrogen of the atmosphere and when they drop on the soil, this fertilize the soils. Um, and in, in addition, the roots of the trees can um, feed the soil by nitrogen. So you economize on chemical fertilizers simply by planting trees alongside your plant crops. There are other examples such as um, push and pull strategies in order to economize on pesticides. You intercrop maize, for example, with desmodium, which is a plant that repels the insects, and you attract the insects by napier grass alongside the field so that the insects are um, pushed away and pulled towards the side of the, um, um, uh, the, the plot that is cultivated with maize. And this is developed on a quite large scale in Kenya and in other parts of Eastern Africa with very significant results and allowing the farmers not to depend on pesticides as they are currently. Yeah, so, so you're basically talking about uh, a complete uh, sort of almost independent ecosystems on at a farm level. Well, what I mean is that um, this addiction of agricultural production to cheap prices of fossil energies is simply not something sustainable. And therefore, we have to develop the concept of fertilizers on the field. We have to allow um, agricultural production to recycle the waste that it produces. And we have to teach farmers techniques that allow them to make the best use of nature. This is not, let me be very clear, this is not a return to traditional low subsistence agriculture. It is instead the science of the future. It is something that is now emerging in a number of countries. Uh, for example, agroforestry developed in Mozambique, in Malawi, in Tanzania, um, push and pull strategies in, in Eastern Africa. Uh, we have other examples um, of intercropping, for example, in, in, in Latin America on a very uh, wide scale. And all these um, technologies have to be scaled up and taught more widely to farmers by uh, horizontal teaching, uh, uh, farmers teaching themselves. You're giving some very good examples of Latin America, of Kenya, but we're here in Brussels today. Uh, we'll be hearing at the workshop also from the European Commission. What role do you see for the European Union and what, what potential do you see for that type of agroecological approach to be made part of the common agricultural policy? Well, it will be much more difficult for us in the north to make this much needed transition towards sustainable agriculture. Um, just because we've developed such a dependency on fossil fuels that it will be extremely difficult to move towards something different. Instead, in developing countries, they can more easily um, leapfrog almost the industrial phase of agricultural production. The European Union can help this by supporting development projects that support this kind of agriculture, but in the EU this will be very difficult to achieve. In 15-20 years we will have no choice. Peak oil, peak gas is now uh, emerging as a major uh, threat to our ability to feed ourselves in the EU and to remain self-sufficient in food. And it is um, in fact uh, based, this idea of self-sufficiency on a myth. Um, we pride our
ourselves on the fact that we produce enough food to feed ourselves, but in fact our food chains, they begin in the gas fields of Russia or in the oil fields of the Middle East. That is simply not sustainable and it is very dangerous in such an inter interdependent world to be um, as dependent. So we have to plan this transition, we have to um, uh, develop these techniques and we have to give incentives, including financial incentives within the, uh, the common agricultural policy to farmers to switch to these resource economizing techniques. So, so one very quick final question then, what concretely would you expect to happen in the European Union to realize this? Well, I'm convinced that um, uh, the common agricultural policy reform is a unique opportunity to reward sound environmental practices even more than in the past. Yeah. And that part of this effort is to preserve um, family farming at a small scale. I in other terms, uh, we have to um, realize that sound ecological farming also depends on relinking the farmer to the land. And it will not be able to reconcile with the spread, as we've seen in Europe over the past century, basically, of large-scale monocultures. We have to um, develop more diversity on the field. Very difficult to achieve in Europe, simply because we have to uh, move in a totally different direction than the one we've been using since almost a century. Thank <laughs> you.